Hello, Phosphodot friends. Earl at thelogbook.com here with the Imagic Selector cartridge. This was something that um, retail locations could run on an Atari 2600. It was actually part of a much larger sort of multiplexing unit that had several games plugged into it. But the default setting was the Imagic Selector, which is you know, it's basically a, a sales tool. You know, play your favorite of Magic, Activision, Atari, Coleco, Parker Brothers, a network game, U.S. games, Spectrovision. Yeah, to heck with you guys. But um, yeah, very much. It, it, you know, it's just a looping thing, uh, and, and obviously favoring the Magic box design as part of the frame around all of the manufacturers' names. So, you know, play your favorite, you know, hey, all of these manufacturers are okay, but in Magic, they're the best. That's all this cartridge does. Let's have a talk. Um, I'm going to have to slow down the rate at which I roll out the Phosphodot Fossils videos. While we, are, while we were all sheltering in place you know, in lockdown, safer at home, whatever you want to call it. It was kind of an easy decision for me to say, hey, you know what, I'm going to start doing these every day again. Which is kind of nuts if you think about it, because you're talking about cranking out one of these 30 times in a row. And that's quite a bit of work, because I've got to tack the open onto it, tack the end onto it, write up a description for each one, upload each one to YouTube, come up with a thumbnail for each one. Um, yeah, there's a lot of work involved in each one of these, even the ones that last only seven or eight minutes, which, you know, th those are the ones YouTube dislikes greatly because, you know, they... YouTube demands... YouTube demands blood. YouTube demands that videos be... 10 minutes at least before they will show up in uh, recommendations for people, before they show up in people's recommendations. Uh, something that's only seven or eight minutes, which, you know, quite a few of these, especially during the, the self quarantine period, have been. Um, quite a few of these have, you know, will go ignored by the algorithm, I'll put it that way. You know, what the freak can do. It's, I, this whole thing is predicated on Patreon support and not YouTube monetization. Um, I have absolutely no uh, no serious hopes that I will ever be making money on YouTube doing this. This is this is for my Patreon peeps, and also to a certain extent, it's kind of here to uh, to maybe rope in additional Patreon peeps. So, you know, those of you who are so inclined, feel free to go to patreon.com slash the logbook. Or if you want to do the coffee thing, ko-fi.com slash the logbook. Or if you want to uh, buy stuff that I've designed, go to the logbook.redbubble.com. I have, um, you know, there's all sorts of fun stuff in there. Shower curtains, bath mats, t-shirts, mugs, but also non-medical grade face masks where if you buy one, one is donated for healthcare workers who are not necessarily in the ICU. You know, you're talking, we're talking about your, your cafeteria workers, uh, you know, in a healthcare setting, your IT workers in a healthcare setting, people who perhaps are not dealing with the nastiest the highest exposure to the nastiest bug right now. Uh, they still need PPE. And if you buy one of the masks from my Redbubble store at thelogbook.redbubble.com, one mask will also be donated to that cause. And I, I really thank everyone who has partaken so far. There are 8-bit video game inspired designs for the robots from the Black Hole, uh, the robots from Silent Running, all sorts of fun stuff, as well as stuff that is not game-related, but there's also uh, stuff related to the Select Game podcast. There's Odyssey 2 stuff in there. It's um, There's space exploration-related designs, which 
those of you who have known me for more than, say, four milliseconds know that I'm really into that. You know, I'm a big fan of space exploration, whether it is with astronauts in a vehicle or whether it's flinging robots all over the solar system, which I am all for flinging more robots all over the solar system. So I'm going to have to ease off a bit on the rate at which I roll out Phosphor.Fossils videos, and hopefully no one is too terribly upset by that. It's, uh, it's simply a matter of, I've, I've got other stuff I've got to be doing. Uh, those of you who are not aware, I meowed. No, I didn't meow. Puck meowed. You okay over there? You okay, buddy? Okay. Yeah. Uh... I'm just checking on you. He, he sounded awfully mournful there. Because he knows I'm winding up to the sob story. Right before all hell broke loose for everyone in 2020, 2020 was practicing on me and my family. We kind of had to leave where we were in Utah on, on sort of an emergency basis and undertake a probably underfunded and underplanned cross-country move. Uh, by the time we got back to Arkansas, which that wasn't even the plan. We thought we were going to Tulsa, and then the housing that I had been arranging for in Tulsa, suddenly that kind of evaporated out from under my feet. And, and there was a plan B, and I tried to set that in motion. And then that didn't happen. And then a friend of mine said, oh, I've got a place you could stay. And I was like, great. And he said, well, you have to wait a week for me to get back there and let you in because he you know, drives trucks for a living. <laughs> and he drives Puck for a living. He drives Puck crazy. You okay there? I worry about my cat sometimes, my black cat. I think it's all been too much for him. Anyway, a friend of mine said he had a place I could live, I'd have to wait a week, and then broke off all contact. Of course, you know, it, at that time I was sitting in a hotel room that I could barely afford to keep staying in, trying to line up, you know, plan D, plan F, plan triple Q, with a silent Z at the end. Now, yeah, that's kind of where I wound up, because my friend broke off all contact with me, and at that point, it was like, okay, I have to find whatever I can rent that I have the money in my pocket for. Which brings me to this place, which is, it's kind of a shack. It's in a very rural area. It, it's, it's far away from anything I could be doing for work, and my vehicle still needs work. Um, so I can't exactly just hit the road and drive. And it's, uh, it's cheap, but it's got issues. This building does not have a working toilet. I live in the only state in the country that does not set a legal bar for the minimum level of habitability for a rental property. And I have rented a place that has no working toilet. A friend of mine kindly rented a porta potty, which is sitting just off the front porch outside that door behind me. That shouldn't have to happen. My kids and their mother wound up someplace else. They wound up staying with her parents for a while, but then they had to uh, move on from that situation. And so we have all kind of split up because obviously the kids can't be here in a building that doesn't even have completely working plumbing. What this is all winding up to is I am spending all day, every day, putting in applications for jobs all over the country video production, graphic design, content writing, uh, proofreading and copy editing, video editing. Um, I think I've probably already said video editing. Public speaking is probably not on the list of things I'm looking for, although I'm open for voice work, podcast production, audio production, any of that. Publication layout. These are all things that I have done professionally in the past, and I am continuing to work for Roddenberry Entertainment on the Mission Log podcast as we speak, but I am also keenly aware that I'm in a position where all of my eggs are in one basket. The The podcast thing, that's something I can do after hours. I need to find the main day job, and I am urgently looking for that and directing all of my resources toward that. 
Uh, I have had some phone interviews. I've had some promising ones. I've had some catastrophic ones, <laughs> par for the course. But the point is, I am having to redirect my energy elsewhere right now. So all of this contributes toward I've got to back off a bit on doing phosphor dot fossils. So we're probably back down to one or two of them a week. We'll uh, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens with this recording session because I'm going to try to sit here and do a bunch of them at once. If I wind up with 20 of them, then okay, maybe I can do three times a week. But, you know, two times a week is kind of my baseline of what is probably sane and manageable. As always, I am very grateful to my Patreon supporters. And there are only three of them uh, keeping this whole enterprise afloat. But I am very grateful for all three of them. None of them are the kind of Patreon supporters. And those of you who have had to do a Patreon yourself, you, you know the kind where, you know, you have someone sitting back, you know, looking at you know, looking at their watch like they're a shareholder or something, you know, okay, you're wasting my time. You know, I'm paying you this much, you should be cranking out this much content at this rate of speed. It, none of my Patreon supporters are like that, thankfully. Thankfully. Because, uh, you know, like I said, everyone who's done a Patreon, it, you've run into at least one like that. And I used to, uh, th there was one I used to have very early on, in the history of my Patreon, he was kind of like, you know, hey, yeah, I thought you were going to be doing one of these a month or something. You know, this is before Phosphor Dot Fossils as a as a YouTube project, and you know, withdrew his support. And you know, it's just kind of like, yeah, well, see ya. Don't let the door hit you on your way out. I'm I'm grateful that I don't have stockholders. I have supporters. And for that, I'm very, very grateful. I could certainly use more like them <laughs> for those who are interested on what they could be pitching in on, on the Patreon end. You know, I also do podcasts fairly frequently, and I'm trying to keep that schedule up as well. And uh, I enjoy doing all of this stuff. I love the fact that I have your support in doing it. I'm just letting you know that on this end, on Phosphor Fossils, I may be doing a little bit less of it for the foreseeable future because I have bigger fish to fry. Uh, really, what it boils down to is I've got to get myself a, a real day job. I have got to be able to support my family because I am now the only one who can work. And I've got to reverse the trend of the past several years, which has been, you know, ever since I kind of fell out of broadcasting because broadcasting ceased to be a thing in this part of the state of Arkansas many years ago, whereas I had been in it for 25 years before that and really did not foresee leaving it. It's, it has ceased to be a thing here. And so I've got to, I've got to get my skill set out of this state. So I, uh, I've got a lot of work to do. I'll still be doing these but probably not as many of them. And I appreciate your understanding on that front. So really, I haven't been trying to turn this into a sob story. That's not the point at all. But I'm just letting you know kind of what the what the state of play is. So there you have it, the Magic Selector Cart. I hope that answers all of your questions about this exciting title on the Atari 2600. Thanks for watching.